All right, Shalom Makim. Hey, Yabashima Shai broke a thumb to my dear brothers out there, you little amount of sisters, worshiping Yabashima Shai in spirit and in truth. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Devon said apostles over there at Great Millstone. All right, man, this is going to be another um, current events, prophecy, and madness. And today's date is uh, September 27th. All right, uh, year of the turn up of Yahweh Yahweh Shai. And as your brothers and sisters see, um, hey, the year is almost over. You know, I'm always going to remind that, you know, the Heavenly Father said he's going to speed up the days. And that's exactly what the Heavenly Father is doing. And as your brothers and sisters know very well, it's a lot going on. It's a lot. It's so much history and revealings that's going on. There's so much current events. You know what I mean? There's so much mad <clears throat> madness in the earth. All these things are signs. And um, prophecy to show us that, hey, we are clearly at the end of this Edomite kingdom. And everybody is out, the, is out of their minds. This first video clip I'm going to show you is going to spark that emotion in you. Let's peep it. We will never forget. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun. Weight on my shoulder. We All right, um, what was very striking about what I seen, you know, because what you're looking at is statues or relics of of us in slavery and Esau have these these statues on display in certain parts of, of, of his 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 this United States. It says the National Memorial for Peace and Justice. Montgomery Montgomery, Alabama. This is in Alabama and that's the mockery. That's our mockery. That's our reproach. One of the the striking things about this this is exactly this one on the screen that's passing. They look like the woman is having a baby. It's a she's birthing down there. So it lets you know that our our slavery was so horrifying that our woman was given given um birth in chains, given birth on the spot. No midwife, no doctor. You know, it just hey, it was just a baby that was just gonna come out, and he was gonna come out wherever. Um, the mother was at whether she was in line, uh, um, walking wherever they had her chained up, you know, whether she was in a boat or ship, it didn't matter. And this is the this this is two things. This is the wrath of the Lord. This is what He said He'd do to us, and this is the hatred that Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white man, had towards us. Let's get a scripture real quick. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28 and 45, it says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which I command thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed forever, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with gladness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So this occurred to us because we was going off with the Heavenly Father, man. You know, this is why it happened. And it said that these, exactly this, these, this statue, these monuments, this is a sign. You know, the sign is that we are the children of Israel and the words of the Heavenly Father has taken place on us. You know? And it was because we did not serve the, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim al Shai, with joy and gladness. That's the why it happened to us. But, you know, let's thank Yahweh Bashim al Shai because he, for his grand mercy. Because now we're at the point where slavery, you know, the whole bondage thing is, is getting ready to be overturned. And we getting, we're going to return to our land where Yahweh Shai delivering us. This is Brook 4 and 24. It says, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they shortly see your salvation from your God. 
which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the heavenly Father, for thy enemy hath persecuted thee. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction and tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways, you Israelites, you Negro Latinos and Native Americans, and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemy. Be of good comfort. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto the Most High, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. So we're at the end of, you know, this tragic slavery that, you know, we undertaken right now. And it says, like as the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, these Edomites, they seen, they seen, you know, they seen their forefather, forefathers, they seen this, they was the one that caused it. They got these monuments, you know, uh, these statues. A statue means it, it, it represents uh, somebody that want to put a remembrance in the earth. So they put these remembrances here, these statues here, so everybody can remember what they did to us. But the Lord said, suffer patiently the wrath. His delicate ones have rough, rough ways. But now the Yahweh Shema is going to return us, man. He's going to return us, you know. And to be of a good cheer because the Lord that brought these things upon us, he's going to take it off us. So, yeah, like I said, this first one's going to strike you a little bit. But nonetheless, man, we got to bring this. We got to bring that to the forefront, you know. So let's see what we have here next uh, on this list. Now, this next thing I'm going to show is Apostle Ramlop. And um, this is very important for a man of the Lord to be able to observe because this is what you this is what you deal with and if you gotta like uh you're gonna hear in the video you gotta listen to when the spirit is talking to you and we're gonna talk about it after let's peep it you see it says hey you gotta listen to the spirit man i just want to say this you gotta listen to the spirit when the spirit is telling you something you have to listen because when you don't listen, this is where problems come in. You know, this is outside of the lesson. You have to listen to the spirit. When you in a situation or you're going somewhere, you're doing something, and the spirit tell you, leave from that place, leave from that place. Don't be hard-headed. Although we all have those moments where we be hard-headed, don't listen, and then it comes back to bite us in the ass and we get mad. When the spirit speaking and, and telling you things and, and, and guiding you, listen. That's just a side note. So let's go back. All right. Um, you know, you brothers and sisters heard Apostle Ramlob give that super solid advice. Now, what it made me consider first is that, you know, when I first came into the word of Yahweh Shimei Oshai, I didn't quite even realize that the spirit was even will even say anything to you or to um you know that voice that that you know I didn't know what that was it almost reminded me of um it almost reminded me of Samuel when the Lord called Samuel a multiple amount of times and he didn't know what that was and he went to Eli which was the priest at the time and he kept saying did thou call us me and uh, Eli said no nah, Go lay back down. And then he kept doing it. And then Eli said, that's the Lord talking to you. Next time, reply to the Lord in this fashion. So, one of the, you know, when the apostle was saying that, I, it just struck me that it's very important to, you have to listen to the spirit. Now, the spirit is not a voice. Like, actually, you hear him, the audio of my voice over the video. It's not a voice like that. Neither is it something that you could see, you know, it's more of a, a feeling. It's more of a, um, it's more of a, of, of a feeling. And then when you get the feeling, you start reasoning in your thoughts. Like Apostle Ramla was given the scenario of the spirit telling you to get the freak out of somewhere. The spirit does that because say, for instance, if I give a quick testimony, I remember one time I went to the park. And that day, it was, I, I don't know, maybe they was having like a gangster hood meeting there. It was a bunch of gangster dudes in there. And I just had my daughter there. Now, the, now I took her over there. 
And I, I kind of felt from the beginning, the spirit was telling me, nah, you just, you shouldn't go to this park. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, man, fuck that, man. You know, uh, man, shit, man, shit, man. I, I, I just want to take my daughter to the park. But the spirit was telling me, you should get out of there. You should get out of there. And I kind of was, I was kind of being stubborn. You know, I was kind of being stubborn, but I couldn't even enjoy myself. The spirit was, wouldn't even allow me to enjoy myself, but rather to get the freak out of there because that it was no good. So that's, that's like the spirit right there. As apostle, um, Ramla gave the example of getting out of there. Now, what, what took me into going back to the story, what took me to get out of there is two of the dudes walked away from where they was at just across my path you know, to, to, to check me out. And then I, that's when I was like, you know what? Let me stop playing with the Lord before he judged me. And I got up and got out of there. And the whole feeling, that whole feeling of feeling like there's, it's almost like a spidey sense. Despite, you know, spider Man's spidey senses. It was almost like that. When that, when I left from the park, the whole, that whole spidey sense feeling went away. So, so the spirit is more like that feeling that them thoughts you start reasoning with yourself. So whenever you're getting put in your different multiple situations, it's the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shai that's reasoning with you. And you have to you have to sit there and pay attention to that reasoning. Because remember, if if you're reasoning within yourself and it's telling you something good, like, nah, man, do, don't do this, don't do that. And it's for your good sake. It's for your safety's sake. It's for you to not go off against the Heavenly Father. That's the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shai. Um, speaking to you, and that's that spirit. But if you don't, if you don't like calm your, I, I, only way I could kind of put is calm your mind down, calm your thoughts down, and pay attention to what the spirit is reasoning with you. With you're not gonna be able to hear it, and then you're gonna make a mistake, or you know, or you could, you know, whatever may happen onto you. John three and eight says, "And the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof." But can it not tell from whence it cometh and whether it goeth? So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So remember, the spirit is like the wind, as the verse just said. And that's kind of like when you're dealing with your daily life and you encountering situations. The spirit is like the wind. It's, it's, it's hitting you. It's reasoning with you. But you don't know where it came from. It just, it, 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 because remember, the angels of the Lord, you know, they're, the, they're of a divine nature. They see things before we see it. They they're there to protect us. So they start re their spirit, the spirit, the Holy Spirit that's with you, the angels that's protecting you, start reasoning with you. And it's like the wind. And that's how the Lord. That's how and and that's for us, brethren, to to pay attention to those things. Now let's read right here in Corinthians real quick. First Corinthians two and ten says, "But unto the heavenly, but the heavenly Father have revealed." them unto us by his spirit for the spirit search of all things yea the deepness of the deepest things of the most high so even when you get in revelations you know you you sitting there and you putting precept upon precept you're reading studying and then all of a sudden this precept come to you like whoa i didn't even know that it it, it matches it's, it's something get revealed to you that's how the lord that's the same spirit that will help you when you out in your daily life and you encountering your situations, but you have to pay attention to that spirit to the best of your ability. Hear that spirit because it's not something physical. It's spiritual. It says for what man knew of the things of a man save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so the things of the most high know of no man, but the spirit of the most high. So since we know Yahweh Shemel Shahid revealed himself unto us, uh, that's how we able to see the spiritual things. That's how we able to see danger before it starts. That's how we able to see an opportunity f uh, to do good, because it's the spirit of the Lord that deals with us, that reveals those things to us, and that's how we able to see them. You know, it says, "Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of the Most High, that we might know the things which are freely given to us." Of the heavenly father and when you pay attention in the spirit as the verse just said you will be able to see the things that's given to you of the heavenly father you even start seeing your lot and your strengths 
in the word of Yah Bashma Shah, and you also see your weaknesses. You will see yourself, if you pay attention to yourself spiritually, you'll see yourself when you your lust starts shooting up and you start thinking in a negative manner. So then you start telling yourself, well, this is not really too good for my spirit. Let me back up, you know, or let me not go to this place or let me not go around this person because I see that, you know, it's not good for me. Now, that's you reasoning with the spirit. That's the spirit telling you, look, that's no good. But that's what the Lord has given to us, the ability to to have the spirit with us to help us and to, to, to acknowledge the spirit when it's telling us, uh, telling us something. And then we know that it ain't something physical that's being told us or somebody that comes to us personally. No, it's it's really that feeling, that, that spirit, that, that what it is, it's just the spirit. And you have to pay attention to it. And and, and like Apostle Ramla was just saying, it'll keep you, it'll keep you, you know? All right? Pete, this last one on that point, it says, Acts 11 and 11 says, Behold, this is an example. This is an example of how the Spirit speaks with you, you know? Acts 11 and 11, it says, And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And this is the story of Cornelius and Peter. All right. And remember, they sent men to get Peter. And it says, And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into a, the man's house. So the point being that, remember when they came and got Peter, he said the Spirit bade him go, nothing doubting. That's that same Spirit that I've been talking about for the past five minutes. That wind, that feeling. So when Peter, was, he was in the spirit and he, he was able to pick up the spirit talking to him. And it, it told him, look, go with these men to Cornelius and you don't even have to doubt nothing. Everything is fine. So that's that same spirit that Apostle Ramla was talking about as well. You know? So, yeah, man, I just want to harp on that. I thought that was the most important part of this little lesson. All right, was that last that last point. Now I just want to show this last thing here. Um I I was saving it, but then the brother found it and shared it. I was like, oh, you know, it's cool. We still edify on it. But you know, hey, hey, let's peep this right here. Yes, there is an agenda about emasculation. But it is us specifically as black men that this agenda has been targeted at the most. Because it was our strength. That they could not deal with so understand what they did and i will skim through it again briefly after they gave us an illusion of freedom they lured us into their system gave us jobs and allowed us to get educations promoted some of their controlled bourgeois negroes and placed them as our goals to ascend to after that program set in our minds they took away all those same opportunities they promoted agendas that removed the black men out of the homes, allowing their school system and their entertainment to program and raise up our next generation. They then destroyed the communities from within by planting drugs and guns directly in our communities. And they marked our streets by placing Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in every city. Not as a memorial for us, but as a marker for them to know where they are attacking specifically. And so that others know that this is a black neighborhood. I mean, I can go to any city in America, and if I want to find the hood, all I need to do is find the MLK boulevards. That wasn't by accident. They set up laws that imprisoned more of our men and left the next generation fatherless and angry. They filled that void with homosexual sellouts who promoted a lifestyle and mentality that destroyed us from within, removing our values completely, having us disrespect our women. Pretty much everything that would have been right for us, they promoted the complete opposite and made these men our heroes and the leaders of our society. And we're still celebrating them today, talking about their money and giving them props and all that other garbage. Now we're totally controlled and manipulated, and we have raised up a next generation of black men that doesn't even know what a black man should look like or be like. We now have men that are submissive to their women and do not leave their homes. Men that are scared to combat evil because they're scared of losing their fake black card. And what we see now is either women or gay black men taking our leadership roles. This is all an agenda that has been used against us because while they diffused us and made sure we are not a threat to them, 
they have been provoking and manipulating us to use our energy to bring about the change they desire in this world. Black people in America have an extremely high influence on culture and trends and social justice, but they are just echoing the voice of their puppet masters. And this has started because you, Mr. Black man, have been neutralized. You have been conquered. And you have been so imprisoned that you believe that the only answer is actually the biggest weapon used against us. Yahusha the Messiah is your only answer. You know, he went off at the end. Jake be trying though, but you know, the scripture talk about, about um, they have not attained it, but the election have attained it. He calls him Yahushua, but no, his his real name was Yahawashai. But as your brother and see it in this video, this is a very good video to to strike the minds of our people to wake the hell up. All right, this whole system that we've been nurtured in, you know, born and raised in, have been nothing but a systematic trap to imprison us, to keep us low, all right? And starting with the head tribe, the Negroes, the tribe of Judah, you know, a heavy attack on them, which trickled down onto all the tribes. You know, like the guy said, you could find a Martin Luther King Boulevard in almost every city. And it wasn't until our, um, you know, our honor or our glory but it was markers, markers to let the people know that this part of the city is um, the place they destroyed. And also this part of the city is where the Negroes or the, 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 the what they call minorities live, you know. And just a side note, too, you'll notice that not just Negroes live in those portions of the city, but also um, the Northern Kingdom, you Latino and Native American tribes, you live in there just like them. You live right next door to them. Okay? And this is what has happened to us. This is, you know... Oh, man. He said that um, our leaders are either a strong black woman. <laughs> when I mean by strong, I mean a, a, a black woman that acts like a man. Or... A homosexual black man you know or, or a homosexual male and and these guys have been placed by the subproclaimed white man to to be the taskmasters to, to keep the subproclaimed white man's um agenda of keeping us down you know to keep it on us you know it's, it's very terrible and this is what yaba shamal shai has broke us from He's broke us from the strongholds of this Edomite and how he's been using our people to keep us down and how he's been using um, um, generational trauma to keep us down. You know? He's been manipulating the generations, you know, in a, in a, in a process to keep us down. So the next generations come, our generations are... are, are Generations are coming and going. The, the 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 future generations or the newer generations don't don't know what the hell is going on because they Esau Edom is systematically keeping us down generationally. He hides what he did to the last generation. You know. He has the leaders to tell to 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 push out do pleasure and pleasure and pleasure. It's just terrible, man. This is Jeremiah fifty. In 11, it says, because you were glad, because you re because you rejoice, or you destroys of my heritage, because you are grown fat as the heifer of grass and bellow as the bulls. The separate claim white man is rejoicing that we're destroyed. He's destroyed the Heavenly Father heritage, which is you Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. And he's grown fat. He's gotten rich over our loss. Isaiah 47 and 6 says, I was raw for my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given them into thy hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient, has thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And this was the doings of the Lord. This is what he did to us. He's allowed this self-proclaimed white man to, to destroy us, man. But this self-proclaimed white man, in the process of him destroying us, he had no mercy on us. And he heavily destroyed us, still to this day. It says, and thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. 
That's the self-proclaimed white man's mouth and taught in his mind. It says, so, shall, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst thou remember the latter end. And I, I'm thankful to Yahweh Shema Shai that this, this self-proclaimed white man, this Edomite, he's finna get a just recompense. He's finna go into slavery. He didn't think about the end of his all the wickedness he did to us. It says, therefore, hear now this, thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that says in thy heart, I am, and none is beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall thou know the loss of children. But these two things shall come upon thee in one moment in a day. The loss of children, widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thy enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seest me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge have perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. And thou shalt not be able to put it off. And de desolation shall come upon thee, and suddenly, which thou shalt not know. So, you heard what Yahweh Shema Shai has spoken to the Edomites, the self-proclaimed white men. You finna experience the loss of children. In a moment and day, you finna receive widowhood. Your sorceries are finna be put down. Your wickedness that have perverted you to believe in that you are a God. You are the most high. You're trying to act like who the world ignorantly calls God. The Lord's finna, the Lord's finna meet you, visit you, put you in slavery, destroy you, destroy your flesh. You know, the Lord finna destroy your flesh. The Lord finna destroy your inheritance. You know, you finna get put down. Your witchcraft and sorceries are finna get put down. And I can't wait till y'all by Shema Shai finish you eating mites off, man. You know. Because you, you did some truly damage to us. You've had your way with us. you had your little run. You're sick and you're perverse. You destroyed our children, our men, our women. You know, you've loved it. You've gotten rich by it. You systematically set up these traps to generationally keep us down. And now you're finna try to put us in a further slavery according to Revelation, the 13th chapter, with your new world order and your... Yo, C hip, yo, M O T B. And y'all about Shemal Shai finna, like it says in Job, when he think to fill his belly, then shall the Lord rain, rain, rain judgment upon you. And I'm saying that a little different. But that's exactly what you eat and might need. And y'all about Shemal Shai gonna do that for us. So, yeah, man, brothers and sisters, I pretty much tagged everything in the spread of y'all about Shemal Shai. Another current events, prophecy, and madness. And I hope you, brothers and sisters, was edified. And hey, Yabba Shemal Shai be with you all. We almost out this kingdom. Shalom Makim. Step. Shalom. Am.